Hi everyone, in this video we're going to look at what a watch folder is. It's this thing here in Media Encoder. Why it's handy, the short version is if I add stuff to this folder that's being watched by Media Encoder, watch what happens. Look at that, Media Encoder jumps into gear and goes, hey, there's something in the folder. I'm going to start producing all these things that you asked me to do and put them in the folders that you asked me to put them. It's pretty handy. Uh, let me show you how to get it set up and its use cases. All right, first up, let's open our watch folder. Go to Window and go to Watch Folders. Okay, and we need to create the folder first. So hit the little plus button. Okay, I'm gonna put mine on my desktop for this exercise. I'm gonna call this one social media. Watch folder so that I don't mistake it for something else. Okay, now I'm gonna use social media here as an example because it's a good use case for this, but just whatever your industry you're in, think, you know, I could use this for making, um, you know, bulk 4K versus HD, maybe low res, high res, all these different kind of presets in here would apply. Okay, so we'll just do a real basic one to start with. So I've got a folder. I'm gonna say that when something goes into that folder, it makes it to H.264. And let's say that we make it, I don't know, high quality HD. I just need to turn it from 4K to HD. That's all this folder is gonna do. Let's have a look in the folder. Let's have a look, where is it? There it is there. Okay, uh, that's the folder that I made, my watch folder. It automatically created this output folder for me. What I need to do now is I need to find a file Okay, I've recorded this 4K or rendered out of Premiere Pro, this 4K version. It's too big, it's 4K. If I drag it in here now, you can either, I'm gonna copy it into here. You could just drag it in there and leave it in there. Watch what happened to Media Encoder in the background. It'll go, hey, there's something in my folder. What am I gonna do? I'm going to apply high quality HD to it. Okay, and what is it gonna do when it's finished? Okay, it's gonna do a couple of things. It is going to uh, output that file. Okay, that HD file into here. It's lower file size as well as physical size. Where did the source file go? It puts it in here and goes, I'm just tucking it away in here because I'm done with it. Okay, and that's where they end up. Now, media encoder needs to be open for this whole process to work. Don't be dragging anything into the watch folder and hoping media encoder will start up. It just needs to be on all the time. Now, let's take it a bit further because yeah, that's, is that helpful? Kind of is. Where it gets more helpful is if you've got more options in here. So let's say that in this watch folder, need I do need a high quality version. I also need a low quality version. So maybe it's gonna stay 4K, so match source and go adaptive low. But I also, remember another output, Okay, I also need to go to social media and I need to go, uh, I'm gonna do HD for all of these. Actually, let's do full HD. Okay, for Facebook. But let's get the specific one for Twitter. Okay, let's give them all what they want. Who else is in here? YouTube, you can create your other ones for the different social medias that are excluded in here. And now, if I go back into this and I say, actually, I'm gonna drag it out of my source folder, put it back into the kind of root again, it's going to say, hey, there's another thing in that folder. What do I do? And it's gonna run through all of these. And look, parallel encoding, let's zoom this along. Oh, good point. How do I stop it? I'm just practicing. I don't know, I just quit encoder. <laughs> that stops it. There's no like pause, stop looking. Even if you drag the file out, it's still, I don't know. I don't feel like there's an official way. <laughs> just cut it and you say, uh, it says, hey, I'm rendering. You say, yep, that's okay. And it just kind of dies halfway through. There's probably a better way. I can't find it. So what happens now? In that same output folder, look, we've got all these other versions. My only trouble is in here, I can't work a way of adding an extension to the outputs of these. So you can't say like, uh, you know, set up a preset that outputs a prefix or a suffix. Suffix on the end here that gives it the kind of name. There might be a way, let me know in the comments if you do know. The way you kind of do it though is, I'm gonna bin all of these, is to actually, when you are setting up your watch folder, okay, cause you can have more than one, social media one, you might have one for broadcast, you might have some sort of editing workflow when you're going to all the stakeholders to create a bunch of different versions, or maybe your website needs a bunch of different speeds and formats depending on I don't know, what you're doing. So. What you can do is here is you can actually output them, not just the output folder. Okay, so you might keep the output folder, but you might say within this output folder, you've got a uh, YouTube. I can't remember what the first one was, right there. I'm gonna get rid of this one. This is my low bit rate. Oh, we'll keep them. This is my low res version. Okay, and work your way through you get the idea output i'll do one more with you then we'll speed it up i can't remember what it is facebook maybe 
Success. All right, so now at least when I do drag this in, so that guy there, I'm gonna drag him back to the kind of watched folder. And now these guys are gonna go through it and they should end up in their folders. Let's have a little look as they appear. There they are, starting to do their thing. So we're getting better, watch folders, going into separate folders, that's pretty cool. All right, the, the kind of next step and where I feel the most value will come from watch folders is when you are using more than one computer. Now there's gonna be a little bit of hand waving and you have to use your imagination because I don't have that, this set up at home. But let's say that this drive here, okay, is shared on two computers, for instance. Okay, it's on a network and it can be seen by multiple computers, maybe multiple editors. But let's say for this instance, it's just me in my office. I've got two computers. My other one that is kind of maybe set up for, I don't know, it's not my daily one. It's just another computer that I have, maybe an older one. Maybe it's the new one because it's gonna do all the rendering. Regardless, I have two computers, my daily driver, which I'm using right now, and this other thing set up in the corner. What I can do is on my daily driver here, I can add things to this watch folder and and on my other computer, have Media Encoder running, have a watch folder like this going, and as soon as I add stuff to it from my daily driver, it springs into action and starts doing all this rendering. Okay, we're doing these small social media things and they're not that long, but if you're doing documentaries, TV shows, maybe long format how-tos, you can see how you can just drag stuff from your computer into this network drive that's shared by both computers, and the other computer goes, hey, there's something in my folder. Doesn't have to be a local network either. You could be doing it via Dropbox, okay, or Adobe's Creative Cloud, okay, or all the different file sharing ones. You just have to make sure that you get it set up where if I add one file to my Dropbox folder here on my computer, it gets synced to another computer, okay, and you just make sure that gets synced into a watch folder. And then watch folder goes, hey, there's something in it. And the computer can fire into life and either it's like a reject old computer Okay, that you're happy that it just the fans are running and it's noisy and it runs downstairs and it chugs away or it might be a dedicated machine you buy like a Mac mini okay which is they're really powerful really cheap in comparison to say like my MacBook Pro here and it's purely a render folder you could take this further and you could have the whole team using a machine okay so we all are on a network we all add our files to this folder and we all share a render machine did that make sense I hope so now let's forget networkiness now and just go back to the watch folder because let's say that, because we talk about rendering it to this machine and then it's splitting it off. You don't have to render it to it. It'll actually accept Premiere Pro file. So I've got, where is it? Let me find it. Okay, that's the file we made earlier in this course. You can actually add project files now to it rather than just like finished clips or MP4s or MOVs. You can actually do this. I'm gonna copy it. And I'm going to go to my shared folder, which is on my desktop. It's this one here. Okay, close in my output. I can paste this in here. Okay, and watch what happens in the background here. It will actually look inside my project. Okay, you gotta have the clean and tidy project for this to work. It will start trying to find all the different sequences in my project. Hmm, mine's not working. <laughs> Let me figure out why. All right, I worked it out. Uh, I did a lot of opening and closing and restarting. That didn't work. Uh, I thought I found it in Premiere Pro because I had like a missing link. That didn't fix it. Turns out it will not. We're trying to dump this Premiere Pro file in it and it's going to dig in and try and find any sequences we have. This particular one only has one. The problem is it's hiding in a folder or a bin within here. So it needs to be in the root. Can you see? I This, this is like Dan with his bad file management. These should all be in there. It's my footage. My sequence, or it is there, that's the one I want rendered, can't be inside this bin. So to drag it out, just drag it to the left. Here we go. And now if I save it and I close it, so it'll, it'll do multiple sequences, which is really cool. Okay, so that's a bonus, okay? You can do lots of them. They just need to be in the kind of root of that project panel. So now let's give it a whirl. This one here, I'm gonna make a copy of it just because it ends up moving it out of my file structure. I don't want that. But now hopefully media encoder oh, look at it in the background it's firing away there we go so you can do that with after effects uh raw files as well or the kind of like a e is it aep is that the file extension for after effects anyway you can dump them in and it will render out the different comps okay so remember media encoder is shared by a couple of different programs and yeah 
So I could be dumping my Premiere profile in there because I'm working on a network drive and it could, instead of like having to render it out first, it will go through and you can create in here. You might have your like adaptive high 4K, you might have your adaptive high HD, all the different social media ones and they potentially could be running on another computer, either on a local network in your office or if you're doing it via the World Wide Web, you could be using something like Dropbox or another more complicated file sharing service. All right, so that's gonna be it for watch folders. They are not used by everybody, okay? But you might have a great project now that might work for it or one in the future, and now you know what they do, watch folders. All right, let's get on to the next video.